Hello to the non-gamers. Today's not for the gamers, it's for the non-gamers. Um, I think the, I'm just going to be honest. I keep saying it. Nobody else is brave enough to say it. You know what's insane? I um, talk so much about how the gaming industry is washed. I spend almost every stream playing games that I enjoy. People in my chat say, no, the games industry is amazing. It's amazing. You're just uh, jaded. And then as soon as my stream's over, they watch like uh, eight hours of people watching YouTube videos and TikTok compilations on Twitch. Make it make sense. Our, our actions and our words are not in line with what we are saying. Like our, our, our proselytized values and our behavior are, are not alignment, in alignment with each other. Sorry, I was just checking out my unban request because I've been away for a week. I don't ban that many people. Hi, would it be possible to get this account unbanned? It is my old Twitch account that I lost and it seemed like it got hacked at some point. I apologize for anything that was posted in your chat on this account in the last 10 years or so. Entire chat log history, this user has not chatted in this channel. Okay, a little unusual, but uh, I'll hit you with an unban on that one. As far as I can tell, given the moderation tools at my disposal, you have not done anything wrong. This happens a lot. Someone just, they got banned summer of 2018. No chat messages. I don't know why I was banned, but I'm sorry. I'm rarely on Twitch. I've been a fan for years, back with no face cam. I don't care if I don't get on banned. I just want to know why. I think that at some point, well, I think it was, yeah, VOD chat. That's probably what it was, right? There's no logs from VOD chat. I mean, they probably said, listen, Here's my philosophy on this. I'm not going to deny that they didn't say something horrible, but also it's five years ago and they have what appears to be an anime profile photo. They could have been 13 years old five years ago. I think it, serving a five-year ban for something and now being like 40% like of your life has gone by since then, then sure, you, you get an unban. I don't see what the message is, unban. Send unban decision. Time served, exactly. I mean, there's, listen, this is not prison, so it's not on the same, you don't have the same sort of ethical and moral quandaries to worry about. But I do think sometimes that like in Vancouver, you could like, stab somebody in the arm with a knife and go to prison for like 36 months. <clears throat> and then I'm going to have the audacity to keep you permabanned for life after you apologized. If you never apologized or showed any form of contrition, then sure, you can, you can stay banned. But if you're like, I'm sorry I said that, like I'm not going to keep you locked out longer than we're locking up people who have committed acts of violence on strangers, like, that's, that's too much. Also, the dude who stabbed someone in the arm probably should have been in prison longer. Oh, you're not ready for that one? Because then I could keep people who annoyed me um, banned for longer without feeling that cognitive dissonance. So really, it's like the Canadian justice system that's letting me down. What do you think about that? <laughs> Lock up the Disney adults? I'm not... I'm, listen... I'm not going to be the first Disney adult that gets locked up. So my thinking is that you can start locking up the Disney adults because for like 10 years, Disney World is going to be like so empty. I'm going to be able to get on the rides in record time. Let me see. I'm just seeing what else is coming. We're going to do some React Core today, but I'm going to see what else has come out. Toho Juonin, Unfinished Dream of All Living Ghost. Probably not. Um, v Pet Simulator? Feeling like your computer desktop is too dull? Need something cute to heal oneself? Come and try this completely free and open source V-Pet Simulator. A cute and adorable pet that supports various feeding interactions to accompany you in game learning is definitely your best choice. As malware? I mean, it says pet, but it's a person? Like, it, I mean, it's not a person, it's a cartoon, but it's not like a dog or like a hamster or something? Like, it's a... Appears to be a young lady in a schoolgirl outfit, and the key art image is uh, her boot stepping on you. POV, you are getting stepped on. I'm probably not going to play that. <laughs> probably not going to play Hitler Waifu, released yesterday, for 60 cents. Probably not going to play My Furry Protogen 2 Paws Emoji. That's just, it's not, 
is not the culture that I'm involved in, which is totally fine. No disrespect, I'm probably not going to play Truth of Beauty Witch, Marine's Treasure Ship either, or Forbidden Dojo, or U Universe Income 2. <laughs> Welcome to the captivating world of universe in come to imagine yourself in an adult visual novel game where you are transported to a mysterious planet filmed with incredible surprises. Excuse me. <laughs> Holy cow. I'm glad I didn't have my screen region up. I'm glad I didn't have the audio up either. Oh my God. Like, I'll just tell you, I clicked on what I thought would open up the steam page, but instead it just started playing the trailer. It was a young lady going, uh huh. And I don't, I'm just going to be real with you. I don't know how many phallic objects she has inserted in her orifice, orifices right now. And they're all on display. Okay. So how are we coming back and, and playing or, or doing Am I the Asshole? There is a new Am I the Asshole subreddit. And by new, I mean a community for two years. But... A-I-T-A is completely washed. A-I-T-A-H may be washed. But it, I'm going to give it a chance, is all I'm going to say. That's also washed. People like two hot takes now, okay? Old.reddit.com slash r slash old hot takes. I dumped my boyfriend for, for leaving my closet door open. I refuse to submit to my boyfriend. Am I the asshole for not switching my first class seat with a 10 year old boy's economy seat so he could sit with his family? My 19, my boyfriend says I need to learn a lesson for not listening to him. Should I give up and divorce my husband? I don't know if I'm qualified to read this subreddit. What does this mean? Husband wants me to be a cuck, cuck queen and cheated. What the hell does this mean? I'm not online enough, or I'm not in the, in the right circles. I know what some of those words mean. I know what a queen is. That's all women. I left my best friend's bachelorette party weekend trip, and now I'm not sure where we stand. I found out my friend wants to marry me. What do I do? My husband found out he has a long-lost brother. My boyfriend commented on my body hair last night. Okay. I mean, we could, do, we could try some of these. We just got to... It's delicate, Okay. Let me just check my own, my screen regions here, because this is, we haven't done a React chord in forever. It's just like, some of these are like very serious. <laughs> I'm not one of those streamers who's like, I want to, like, I'm not going to click on, um, let me, let me see. I don't think I'm going to click on, I caught my husband texting a minor. I'm on an eight hour road trip with him and don't know what to do. That's not, that's something I feel like you might want to talk to at a minimum uh, like a therapist, but probably also, I don't know, the police, may, their parents, for sure. This one is super heavy, by the way. Really? How could this be super heavy? I dumped my boyfriend for leaving my closet door open? For context, I've lived in my apartment for about four years. The mutual friend stayed in the beginning. Now, listen, I'm not trying to create family drama here. And this is so much not related to the actual content of the post. We need to have a revolution in the education system to teach people how to tell stories. This story may be interesting, but you have to get me there because you're not, I was going to say you're not paying me to, to listen to you. Like if this was a therapist, then sure, you add all the context and stuff like that, but you got to hook me early. This, it reminds me of like my, my wife was talking to my niece when we were away on vacation and she was trying to explain, she was trying to ask my niece uh, the details of a vacation that she took with her sister. And the first thing that my 11-year-old niece said was, well, two months ago, my cousin was staying with us, and I was just like, what are we doing with the, the English teachers in this country? We're from two different countries, but, you know, we share a lot of culture at least. It, it's a simple question where I want relevant details, and then you're giving me Peter Jackson's The Hobbit first. Like, you got three movies that are leading up to the actual stuff that I want to see. And there's a good, you know, it's nice to build a moment. Don't get me wrong, but I don't know who any of these people are. I've lived in my apartment for four years. The mutual friend stayed in the beginning, but they moved three years ago. So since then, I've been living on my own. I was originally going to have my boyfriend move in with me once my lease ended, but of course, change of plans. Okay, okay. 
So my ex posted on Am I the Asshole for leaving my closet door open, yet he missed very important details. One question that kept appearing was why didn't I close the door even though I never leave it open? Ever since I was little, I've trained my brain to always make sure the closet door was closed. All Okay, when I was six, I was sharing a room with my older sister. One night she went over her, to her friend's house for a sleepover. My parents and I got home a little bit late. I kept hearing a noise from somewhere, but wasn't sure where and just assumed it was the AC. I laid on my back just staring at the roof and heard my closet door being opened. My bed was faced towards my closet, so when I moved my head down, I could see this old man coming out of it. I screamed and my parents came running in. My dad grabbed me and I saw my mom hitting that man with one of her favorite pans. We called the police and later found out the man was homeless, must have snuck in while we were away and hid in my closet when he heard my parents' car come in. This is crazy. Like, I'm... <laughs> They're never beating the... Po this post is fake allegations on reddit why why her favorite pan since then i've suffered from ptsd in fear of someone coming in my closet again i mean i think that if this story is real that makes perfect sense <laughs> that's that seems pretty fair that was until my current therapist she suggested i could use something by a nightlight and place it by the closet, and then I asked if I used something else, like something that could stick onto the walls? It was first these big glow-in-the-dark dino stickers. I felt kind of silly about it first when I did put it up, but when I had my sleep paralysis, I was still scared, but now I was able to tell what was sleep and what wasn't, and it gave me a sense of comfort. I changed the themes occasionally to dinos, planets, and now stars. For the past seven years, it's worked for me. Moving on. I'm sorry. I'm because you know what I'm trying to not say is that this sounds like the person writing this is eight years old. I'm not I'm not suggesting like that this is fake necessarily. I'm, and uh, people are saying like, no, this is a real thing that you do for sleep paralysis. I'm not touching that issue at all because I don't have any expertise on that issue. I'm just saying I don't think that the average like person in their 20s would add the detail of like, I used glow in the dark stickers and then I changed them from dinosaurs to planets and now stars. Like that most people would know that that is a, an element that is not really relevant to the, the story at hand. Like there's the, the, this post could have been a meeting, which could have been an email, which could have been a text, which could have been an emoji. Maybe skull emoji, closed door skull emoji. I moved out of my parents' home at 20 to live in an apartment with a friend who I met in college. I only went for two years. It, no, it doesn't matter. It's a Reddit post, not an English assignment. Yeah, but it's like, this is not how people talk to each other. Now to me, X. We pretty much clicked when we met, had similar hobbies, liked exploring new foods. It was fun. I also told him about my trauma, asked that I didn't mind it open during the day. But at night, it needs to be closed no matter what. He could still put or take something out of it, but close it back up. He complied throughout the entirety of our relationship. It wasn't until a few months ago where he started to act very controlling. He would say small comments about certain foods I would eat, like how it's affecting my liver or something, and recommended other things. It started getting to the point where he suggested I quit my job at one point when he finished college and moved in, but I told him it'd be beneficial for both of us to be working. He never asked again. However, he did start asking things like if I could cook for him, even though I said I was tired from work, would I stop working if he made enough money for the both of us if I still wanted kids? I think he wanted to ask me to become a stay-at-home wife mother, but I could be overanalyzing. What happened to the closet door, man? This is the top post of the month? I don't know what to say. I'm a little lost because I feel like I'm inundated with details. Your boyfriend left your closet door open. The, the only relevant detail here is that um, you have PTSD related to your closet, which is, that seems completely fair. I don't care about the dinosaur stickers, glow in the dark, nightlight, planets, stars. Your boyfriend wants you to become a stay-at-home mother, even though you don't have kids. You went to college, but only for two years. Um, he wants you to eat foods that are good for your liver instead of bad for your liver like this has nothing to do with anything am are you the asshole is this is, is there a question involved in this post is, is she the asshole i don't know if anybody's the asshole i feel like your boyfriend made a mistake and didn't close the door and honestly without being rude like your story is too insane for me to possibly 
give a verdict on your behavior. I can't add anything more to the post, so I'm answering some questions people keep asking. Why did he keep, why is this shit written in like creepy font? Why did he keep going in the closet? I feel like people are assuming he would go in every hour, but no, he would come in just to get his textbook if he was studying an exam. And it was like once every few weeks and I'd still be awake watching a movie on my phone. Why didn't I close the door? I do, I always do. Right before I go to bed, first thing I do is close the closet. It's like if you turn off the lights, you who turned, this is like without, <laughs> I'm not trying to make light of this person's trauma, okay? These are the things that you concern yourself with when you're like eight years old. The, the PTSD associated with the closet is a different issue. But like if you're getting into an argument with your boyfriend about like you turn the light on. So you should be the person who turned the light switch off is is insanity. This like little kid social dilemmas like this is it's just too much, man. Why am I going to get up from bed to close the closet if he's the one who left it open, especially if I'm dealing with sleep paralysis? What was his alternatives? He commented on how the closet squeaks. I told him I did find it annoying at first when I moved here, but our friend said it would be a good way to hear, to hear if someone was moving it. So this is why I was, it's squeaky, the door is squeaky. I don't want to close it because the door is squeaky. He wanted to remove the door or put a lock on it. I told him I did want locks, but my landlord wouldn't allow any changes to any of the doorknobs. Are we still together? No. Are his friends and family on his side? No, turns out his just told him I got angry about him leaving the door opens once. What are you talking about? She's responding to questions. My take as a, as a streamer, so we're not in the same boat because I don't have the same kind of PTSD, but I get asked questions like all the time. You, it's up to you as the person with agency in the situation, as the, as the quote unquote OP in order to choose which questions need to be responded to. Like sometimes I'll be in the middle of a rant and someone, for example, you see it right there. There's some self-awareness. Someone typed, when is Isaac coming back? I don't need to surface that into the narrative right now. Just because somebody asks you a question doesn't mean the response is warranted. You know, it, if I was playing Spelunky and someone said, when, when, Isaac's, when is Isaac coming back? Then there's some relevancy there, especially because it's a one word answer. Tomorrow! Hang on, librarian, can I get a, you know what I'm asking for here, right? I read the title and I clicked instantly because, ooh, girl, I want to read your update because he's definitely the arsehole. It does sound like he's, I mean, he made a mistake, but I, why are they, I mean, they're, they're dragging the dude like so much. I think I'm, I'm just, I'm still, I only have a single toe in the culture of two hot takes right now, okay? So I'm just on... Regular am I the asshole, the top post would be like, you sound crazy and your boyfriend didn't do anything wrong. Uh, he should delete Reddit, get a lawyer, go to the gym, etc., etc. This, right now, just from post one, this seems like it might be an inverted version of that. Telling you he thought that you were lying about your trauma for attention from him, that's gross, that guy is icky. Notice I'm adding it to my how not to give my wife the ick post, or uh, my, my notes app. Don't gaslight her into thinking she's pretending to have trauma for attention. That'll be under, it'll be item number 935. One item above it is leaving my seatbelt buckled on the airplane after the sign turns off that allows you to take your seatbelt off. One above that is uh, slipping on my shoes instead of untying the laces and then putting my feet into the shoes and then tying them back up. Right above that is... Um, Drinking a soda by turning the aluminum tab so that the, the holes line up and then you can put the straw into that and then sipping on the Diet Coke like this, like Cindy Crawford in a, in a commercial. There's a few. Bringing my own cheese slice to a restaurant. <laughs> Keep cooking. He's on a roll. So much for you speaking out about not being broke up. Ha ha ha. She left you. How you feel? She dodged a massive bullet with this one for being insensitive about her own trauma. Holy cow, they're, they're snitch posting the guy who got dragged. This is crazy, man. I'm not sure who I should be on this subreddit. This is crazy. But I will say I'm gonna lose it if like the top post here is talking about how your boyfriend shouldn't have closed the toilet lid. Couples that go through the really bad shit usually stay together the longest. Please receive this upvote and 
vacate the city limits immediately. Careful telling her to vacate, vacate the shitty limits. This reply is not getting the attention it deserves. I cackled. I fucking hate Reddit, dude. <laughs> I fucking hate this shit. This post could be like, my whole family died in a car explosion. The top comment is always like, wow, this blew up. People are like, you're so going to hell for this incredible joke. He never pretended to be anything other than who he is today. That's a bad start. So that is bad. He's a big gamer. And I don't, okay, listen. I was watching, I was watching this show on Netflix because I ran out of episodes of Love on the Spectrum. So I said, let's see what else is in the same vein here. And there's a show from South Africa called Save My Marriage. And it's like couples that are on the verge of divorce and they talk to like a marriage counselor. I was losing my mind because there's this couple that like they're engaged, but they, they're not married yet. And they were like, how much time do you spend together? And they said, almost none. And uh, the therapist said, well, what is your husband doing on weekends when he's not spending time with you? I swear to you, dude said, um, watching anime, which is fine, but at some point you gotta spend some time with your spouse. And then she said, okay, watching anime and what else? He said, I'm also a big gamer. And then he waited like 30 seconds and he said, also there's the gym. But then, the therapist assigned them homework to spend time together. They chose to uh, write poems for each other and they turned it into a competition. They said, if you, if you write the best poem, I'll be uh, your slave for a day. I'll do whatever you want. The winner takes all, okay? I swear to you, the woman wrote her poem and it, it started, roses are red, violets are blue. Um, I know you love me, I also love you. You're my dude, you're my guy, you're my ride, and my die. Roses are red. <laughs> Violets are blue. Sugar is sweet, but not sweet as you. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm not a writer, but for you, I'm a fighter. Your main rider. If love me... <laughs> this part gets me. Ooh, if loving you is a sin, then I'm ready to win. All sounds very cliched, but trust that for you, I prayed. I love you, baby, because you're definitely my baby. Booyah. <laughs> huh. I don't even think I have to read mine anymore, like you actually won. Really? Yes, you did. And then he was like, wow, that was really good. I think you won. And she said, no way, read yours. And his was like, like a Maya Angelou. He was like, cold like the kiss of winter, he found me. Warmth laying deep within a lover's hold. Epic stories told and the naivety of the youth sold. And yet boldly you reached into the pit of the abyss, not only to see, but to hold. Hold not only me, but we in eternity. It is our story, an epic tale, a dream too surreal, and yet in my hand it lives. And, forever, and forevermore shall it be that you, Viv, from the cold grasp of lonely winter, have set me free. Um, I think you won. No. That was so deep. Your one was like... No, mine was playful. Your one actually started with roses are red. Yes. I literally thought you were joking. No, I wasn't. I literally wrote that. And I even wrote the just kidding part. Holy crap, you actually did. Down, down, down. Deeper into the blue ocean of your love. Your retention helps me surface. I fill my lungs with the breath of your affection. And I was like, dude, he's blowing her out. This is a hydrogen bomb versus coughing baby. And then she was like, oh my God, that was beautiful. And he's like, honestly, I still think you won. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> oh man, this is good stuff. He, he cooked her, man. He knew what he was doing for sure. Wait, am I the asshole for demanding my husband get rid of our bidet? <laughs> I, 29F, have been completely traumatized by my husband and our new toilet bidet. 
A couple months ago, my husband installed a bidet in our master bathroom, and I initially didn't think much about it. I know they're a lot more common now, but I'm actually using it, and I actually enjoy using it myself. That is until one day, I walked into our ensuite and heard moans, running water, and clapping sounds coming from the water closet while my husband was in there. I barged in and caught him full on master, full on masturbating. <laughs> It, this was not pinkies up. This was a clenched fist. I've been accused by chat of being a prude before. Am I crazy to think that this just doesn't feel like it would do much for me? Like if someone is like squirting your... Well, I don't know what nether regions means here. Because like honestly, I think if a bidet was shooting at my testicles... That wouldn't even register, really. Like, that would almost be, like, a neutral feeling. If the bidet was shooting at the aperture, I think there would definitely be a sensation. What I'm imagining in my head is not a sensation that pairs well with arousal, but I recognize that everybody's different. It's just, this is, to be honest with you, is something I've never heard of uh, for for men before, but maybe I just need to open my mind. This is where your prostate is? Yeah, but there's no way that, that this bidet that he got on Amazon has a strong enough... St you know how, like, laser focused the aim would have to be for him to consistently be getting a, a shot to the prostate? It's like, a, it was a 50 cal bidet or something like that? Like, it's it's a little up there. He instantly felt remorseful and leaped from the toilet to tend to me and my wounded hand. Wait, I, I, he slammed the door to the water closet, smashing my hand in the process. Okay, I see. Still fully erect. Without thinking to shut off the bidet, the water stream went wild, spraying everywhere. It was a disaster. If not for the pain in my throbbing hand, I would have mistaken the incident for a fever dream. Anyway, I later asked him how often he, do he does this, and he admitted it happens almost every time he goes number two. He mentioned he enjoys the feeling of pressure on his bum while he pleasures himself. I guess I don't care so much about the logistics of how he chooses to get off. But after all this and the significant increase... No way! Significant increase in your water bill. I don't buy it. This dude would have to be sitting there like four hours a day for you to even notice. Anyway, we're keeping the bidet. They've become a, a throuple. No, I'm not jealous of it. We have a great relationship. He promised to cut back a little and I promised to knock next time. Okay, big, big win for this uh, couple. I mean, I don't know what they want me to say. Like, are you the asshole for demanding their husband get rid of the bidet? I don't know. I would feel... <laughs> I think, am I crazy to think that it would do a lot of damage to your relationship for your... Every time your husband said, I have to go poop, you just imagine him shooting his ass full of water and jerking off on the toilet? Like, I mean, I, I think that it would just... I think it would give your wife a little bit of ick. I'm not an ick whisperer. I'm just saying, like... I think they should be open to trying new stuff. I'm just saying it's... I don't know, it would be embarrassing for both parties. I think it would be kind of hard to come back from, but... She seems okay. This should be a scene in a comedy. I was thinking South Park. Just imagine Randy or Cartman doing this. LOL. More so Randy. Oh, MG. I can see an entire episode of this already in my brain. Randy gets a bidet. The joke understander has logged on. Sharon, it's the cleaner option. What do we do? Wipe our asses with paper like animals? No, we let the soothing power of water cleanse us. Make us whole. Make us real again. And excuse me, I need to use the bathroom now. I thought this was America. They took our jobs. They took our jobs. Uh, can we add some smug? Oh, and the bidet needs to talk like the shake weight or Bebe's boobs. Smart bidet. Good morning, Randy. Please choose power and temperature. After a little change thing can pop open to pay it. Lamau, you need to be on the writing team. This is perfect. In character, especially the end. Lol. Didn't they already kind of do that with the Japanese toilet episode? Dude, thank you. All these comments saying South Park should do a bidet episode. I'm thinking in my head, damn y'all fake South Parkers. People, there is a loneliness epidemic. This shit has nothing to do with the original post at all. These people are just reaching out, looking for somebody to... Just somebody to listen, man. <laughs> 
season 26, episode 3, Japanese Toilet. Pretty funny episode. In the new season, he did get a bidet. Sadly, I don't even think Matt Stone and Trey Parker could make this shit up. So true, Matt Stone and Trey Parker could not make up a plot of a dude jerking off on the toilet. That is simply too crazy for even their revolutionary comedy minds to possibly conceive of. <laughs> this sounds like a Seinfeld sketch where the, oh, the, the, the lady uses it like a water pick and yada, yada, yada. I'm picturing a doctor recommending it to George's aging parents. Then he tries it and so is thrall. He ends up, Gary, do dogs have tried, they've been trying to tell us, don't put your ass in there. It's a water fountain that's never empty. What brand is that bidet asking for my boyfriend? It's got to be a toto. Not a toto. Good bidets will stop pumping water when you stand up. In the Hindi language, toto means dick. OMG, this is the same person, man. This the same person who said, I'm picturing an episode where Randy gets a bidet. OMG, this was the context I needed for the other comment to be amazing. Toto is also a brand of bidet in Japan. The joke understand there is logged on twice. Guess they are not from Kansas, not anymore. Can't bless the rains down in Africa either. Holy cow, man. This is crazy. I'm, this is, I'm fascinated by this little subculture down here. A guy who enjoys being clean is 100% better than those guys who refuse to even wipe. Obviously, 118 upvotes. I prefer... A clean asshole to an asshole covered in shit. Hot <laughs> take. <laughs> Are there really men who refuse to wipe? Spend enough time on Reddit. I've read many stories where men refuse to wipe because that's gay. There's no... <laughs> I'm sorry. This has happened to one person in Earth's history, right? Just one individual. And then like it's being echoed across 7 billion people's... A friend of a friend that had, you wouldn't know, there was a kid in their class that thought, no, for real, I, I don't know, maybe. Here we go. With the upcoming global water crisis, there needs to be a discussion about the bidet usage. I'm calling bullshit on the significant increase of usage. Let's talk about growing almonds in California and golf courses in Arizona. We know, man, we know, you sanctimonious motherfucker. It's just a funny post, why you gotta... Why well, you gotta bring golf courses in Arizona into this? Some people still believe that it's the little guy refusing to recycle his little plastic straws that's fucking up the environment. What the, it's, you're talking about a dude getting the prostate massage from his Amazon bidet. Like, it's just, it's not that you're wrong, it's just, what's the point? Look how much water the ocean uses, bro. <laughs> I never thought of it that way. My boyfriend commented on my body hair last night. I'm not touching that one. <laughs> He's not talking about her eyebrows. What is this post? Did I cheat on my husband? To feel some sense of self-worth. I slept with someone else. Yes, okay, you cheated. <laughs> we don't need to read the whole post. I'm, listen, you might have your reasons, but like I just had to find the, the topic sentence in there, right? I want my husband to fall in love with my sister? We made too many, we went too many pages deep, man. Hang on, I'm scrolling. Hmm. Hmm. Did he cheat or did I catch an STD from a koala? Update, he cheated. <laughs> Try our server life. Oh, you know what, that's a good idea. I actually think we got some good posts out of two hot takes. Thank you for the suggestion. Punched a customer in her breast. Oh no, it's me. Diet Coke is not an appropriate response to how are you doing this evening. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's why I ordered Coke Zero. To the guy that asked for teriyaki sauce at the Italian restaurant and then tipped $3 on $103. Listen, I think that this subreddit is entertaining to read, but there's not a whole lot from a, a streamer-based perspective, okay? Like most of it is just like my customer was an asshole to me today. And I, then when I look at it, I'm like, I agree. Try r slash DoorDash. <laughs> okay. Is it DoorDash or DoorDash underscore drivers? r slash DoorDash. Okay. I'm looking for, for as much unhinged as possible. 
r slash DoorDash is kind of crazy. <laughs> okay, you're not wrong. Um, so this happened five minutes ago. Hi, this is DoorDash connecting you to your Dasher for updates about your order. Sorry, Taco Bell is very slow today. That's all right. Thanks for letting me know. I take it you're asleep. Sleep tight, beautiful. OMG, wrong person. Ah. <laughs> oh, man. WTF is my driver on. <laughs> Sorry, this is, again, maybe a good subreddit to browse. I'm not sure about it being argumentative content. Is 2837? Question mark. I paid on DoorDash. The card said that it does not have enough money. Question mark. I paid through the app. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how this happened, man. The only, I mean, I've had some, I guess, like semi-humorous DoorDash situations. The one that got me the most, though, was when, uh, and listen, I'm a, there's the asshole, I'm 50% the asshole, the driver is 50% the asshole. I ordered on the app, but the map, despite the address being input correctly, the map put a pin on like a different part of the city, okay? That had a, a similar sounding address. I noticed that like 15 minutes after I made the order, so I called the driver and I said, hey, just so you know, like if you could use Google Maps or something, punch in this address uh, instead, because if you go to the other one, it's gonna take you across the city. And then he went like, oh, motherfucker, this fucking sucks. This fucking shit is so stupid. And then like hung up on me. And then he called me back like two minutes later and was like, hey man, sorry. I thought that was DoorDash support calling me. I didn't know it was the customer. So I just wanted to apologize. And I said, no worries, brother. It's, I get it. It's frustrating. We really appreciate it. And then when he finally showed up at our house, we had ordered like four personal pizzas and all the pizza boxes were like vertical in a reusable bag instead of stacked on each other horizontally. And my parents were like, I don't think that's how you're supposed to transport pizza. And I was like, I'm sure it'll be fine. And then my mom opened up her pizza and it was just totally fucked. Like all the, the ingredients had like slid off onto the top of the box and the crust was all like crushed and shit. <laughs> but we just laughed about it because it's just, you know, I mean, it's to get, it was more valuable to get the story than it was to get the meal. Because the story makes me laugh every time I think about it. Should I have had my account deactivated for talking to customers like this? Hey, it's your Dasher. I'm in Arby's. They said they do not have mozzarella sticks. Shall I send them to the pit? Yes. Done. Joy laughing emoji. Joy laughing emoji. <laughs> May I offer anything else that will please King Armando? May I offer jalapeno bites? Yes, that's fine. There's no longer staff, so I'll have to make it myself. Haha, <laughs> I didn't think this through. Now to Google how to make jalapeno. I would be, listen, th the first part was funny. The second, the, the rest of this, I would be like, all right, buddy, just bring the food. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> like, I, I ordered DoorDash because I didn't want to, like, go through the effort of cooking. And now I'm, I got to laugh at all the jokes that you're putting in here. <laughs> Did blur his name and then just write it, too. P.S. Jokes aside, they're making it now. I'll be on my way soon. I mean, it's funny. <laughs> Pharaoh, please. Pharaoh. My temple needs its Pharaoh. Oh, man. I'm, just, I'm not going to put this one on the screen, but... Not trying to sound like... This is the DoorDash driver. Not trying to sound like a pervert, but just wanted to say you are beautiful. You sound like a pervert. Face palm emoji. Sorry, just tried to give you a compliment. <laughs> Oh, man. This happened to my friend. I hope the dasher is okay. <laughs> oh, man. You know what? Thank you for recommending this. It's not the same as React Core, but it's very funny. This is my exact uh, style of content. Thank you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to favorite this subreddit and read it when I'm using my bidet. Checkers has confirmed your order from DoorDash. Message from your dasher. I'm so sorry. I fell down and crash on bike. Please cancel. I was doing too much orders. 
Oh, man, that's really good. <laughs> that is really good. I did have a DoorDash order once where my wife ordered something, and I probably don't need to tell you what it is, but it came with a miso soup. And then when I went down to get the order, the dude was like, oh, yeah, sorry, I crashed on my bike and spilled like half your soup. And then he was just sort of looking at me like, I was like, oh, that sucks. But at the same time, I was like, what do you want from me? Like, if, like without being rude, I understand the plight of the DoorDash driver, but like, I didn't make you fall off of your bike. Like, I don't understand what I'm, like, if I'm supposed to give you money because you fell down, like, it's not my fault. You're not driving a Prius or something like that. I think he's just letting you know. I didn't do anything. I'm not the rain. I'm not his, his tire. Now I got to go up and explain to my wife why the miso soup is half empty and the bowl's all fucked up. And all the rest of the, <laughs> all the rest of the styrofoam in the bag is like covered in miso. We went wrong somewhere in the world. Or maybe it was like this before. This shit would terrify me, man. I mean, I think that's, the, that's what it's like designed to do. 295 drop all deliveries here. No trespassing. Do not enter. Guard dogs patrolling premises. Violators consent to waive all rights. There's no way this sign is legally binding, right? If you walk past this cone, you give up your right to not be killed? Like, that doesn't seem like it would hold up in court. <laughs> it depends on the state. Well, like, this is not even the same situation, okay? But I was on a walk with my daughter two or three weeks ago, and this house had a gate, and then in front of the gate, it was a wood gate, so you couldn't see through it. It wasn't like a chain link fence. It's important. In front of the gate, they had a big rock that they had painted to look just like a kitty cat. So my daughter said, oh my God, kitty rock, can I pet it? And I was like, it's, it's on the public side of the gate. It's past, like, it's closer to the sidewalk versus the, uh, the I was gonna say the opponent's house, but you, you get what I mean, the person's house. As far as I'm concerned, that's kind of, it's not communal property in the sense that like I could put a, my own tree house on it or something like that, but it's not like I'm trespassing. So I said, sure, go ahead and pet it. She went over to the, the rock and she was petting the rock and she was saying like, oh, cute kitty, cute kitty, even though it's just a rock. And then I saw on, a, on the gate, it had a sign that said like, beware of dog, it bites on sight or something like that. And I heard from the other side of the gate, I heard Cujo that was going like, <sighs> and I feel like you can be a good neighbor, or you can be an insane shut-in, but I feel betrayed that you straddled the line. You put out a decoration that was like, this is a friendly house, but then you also are like, anybody that passes through the threshold of this gate will be summarily executed by my pet. Like that's, I got baited, yeah, exactly. So as soon as I heard the growling and the barking, I was like, we better get out of here. Cause I'm sure like it's three seconds away from like a screen door slamming and like a, you know, well, 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 what if Kitty Rock caught another one? It's just, I don't mind, honestly. If you wanna be the friendly neighbor, I'll stop and have a conversation with you. I'll remember the name of your dog and make small talk. If you wanna be the insane neighbor, I will not make eye contact with you when I pass by your house, but at the same time, like you can't, you can't put one foot in both pools. It, no disrespect, but if your dog like starts making advances on us, I'm probably gonna have to kill your dog because I don't know my own strength. And unless you've got like a Bernie's mountain dog or something like that, I don't see it going down like that dog's gonna get one over on me, okay? If you got a police trained German Shepherd, sure, maybe, but even then, because I read the wiki how for like, how do you kill a wolf and a dog is just a smaller wolf? I understand when the dog bites you, um, it doesn't have an unlatch instinct. So all you do is, is offer your hand so your hand gets bitten and then you shove your whole fist down the dog's windpipe uh, and then you just put it in a rear naked choke with your hand in there until, you, so I'm just saying, be careful what you wish for when you put out that kitty rock that says, hey, this is a cute decoration. But then you've also got a sign that's like, we'll shoot trespassers on sight. I'm just saying, be careful because that primes me. Now I'm going into fight or flight mode every time I walk past the, the house. 
This has got to be a, a, a PSYOP, right? This was written by, a, by DoorDash HQ. A Hawaii delivery driver who pulled in $114,000 on DoorDash last year says the tips are awesome and it's like delivering in paradise. <laughs> His name is Ronnie Coleman. <laughs> so true. Lightweight. Ain't nothing but a peanut. No, I, I'd be happy too if I was delivering peanuts all day for six figures in paradise. Wither a random crop and draft an additional common crop of the same type. I'm definitely coming to terms with the fact that it's possible that I might be stupid. Almost every game that I play, after about 15 minutes, I say, this is too complicated. <laughs> and then I am like, someone should really just make like a Subway Surfers that I don't feel guilty about playing. Every game, I go, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. I get it, I get it. But then like a minute later, I'm like, why is this shit so complicated? If you started playing Slay the Spire in this year, do you think you would drop it for being too complicated? No, because Slay the Spire is not a complicated game. It's just a hard game. But the mechanics are, are delightfully simple. There's just like, you know, a few keywords you learn as you play it. And then like the, the cards are like, do six damage, do eight damage, apply vulnerable, stuff like that. I feel like every other card game, maybe not every other card game, I feel like a lot of card games, strategy games, RPG, tactics games, roguelites, etc., etc., I feel like they break, in my opinion, they have a tendency to submit to being over-designed. People get inspired by a game like Slay the Spire and they say, I want to make a deck builder, but I can't just make a card that's like do eight damage because then I'm just making Slay the Spire again. So then it's like... There's 900 different uh, elements attached to things, and there's modifiers, and there's status effects, and there's different card types, and etc., etc. Darkest Dungeon 2 is simplistic? Yeah, but it's not... Um, you don't want me to go as hard on Darkest Dungeon 2 as I would have to go, to be honest. I think they got the recipe not... <laughs> In my opinion, they made a good game that I don't want to play. That's the, that's the diplomatic way to say it. I think they made the best version of the game that they wanted to make and it just is, it, it doesn't fit for me. Because I feel like, for me, I want a roguelite to like, I don't want a roguelite to have bosses where it's like, you have to do things this way to beat the boss, if that makes sense. I want, I don't want the bosses to be a puzzle. That's what I'm trying to say. I want a roguelite boss to be like, you can kill it a hundred different ways. It's just like a power check and a skill check for where your run is at. I don't want it to be like 95% of every run is a roguelite. And then the bosses themselves are like, oh, you just, you know, flip the red switch, then cut the blue wire, then flip the yellow switch. How about the rat in Gungeon? You ever, did you, were you, were you at the stream yesterday where I was talking about the fact that the only thing gamers love more than Baldur's Gate 3 is arguing about Baldur's Gate 3 while not playing it? That's what we're doing right now. We have a game in front of us, we're, we're enjoying it, we're trying to wrap our head around it. People were not pogged up for the actual gameplay, but then when a man gives his opinion on video games, they're like, oh really, what about this edge case instead? I'm not part of that culture. I'm playing with my action figure right now, and you're Al from Toy Story 2 walking in and going, do you know that's a fake that's not actually made at the original, you know, Woody factory? And I'm like, okay, brother, just drop off the food and leave me alone. I'm just going to be honest with you. I don't think it's a problem with the game. I think it's a problem with me. I don't think I'm cut out for this, man. We need a new school of game design for people who are dumb. Normalize... <laughs> Wait, where am I going with this? Let me think about this. The school is called the Casino. Candy Crush. Super Auto Pets. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. Because, like, I understand... I'm not being a hater, sincerely. I understand there's a market for this. But my ass does not know what's happening. <laughs> It's just too much, man. It's all the, the, the crops have subtypes, okay? I understand. They also have effects. And then they, their subtypes allow you to get a set bonus. I get it. 
It's like getting the godly plate of the whale and the godly helm of the whale in, in Diablo. But the, and then you got this space here, you got the three by three grid, uh, no fog of war, et cetera, et cetera. But to keep all of that in my brain simultaneously and then synthesize the information effectively in order to make an informed decision is too much for me. I can't, I don't have the intellectual condenser that can look at the full scope of information that's available here and turn it into a digestible form in order to feel like I have agency over my results. Like basically, I'll tell you where my brain is at. Essentially, when I look at this, I look for the word mushroom. I don't see the word mushroom and I say, okay, well, all of this seems not that great for me then. What is the B? Spreads flower? I don't even think I have flowers. I think I'm like exclusively dedicated to mushrooms here. I could get a rare seed climber it withers at the beginning of the third day. The music probably isn't helping his deprecated neurons. Excuse me. Baldur's Gate 3 dev takes shot at streamer in chat. Clickbait, 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 clickbait. Dexerto picks it up. Everybody that follows Dexerto and then just reposts Dexerto stuff picks it up after that. You got to be careful, Macros. Heavy is the head that wears the crown, okay? Should play that. Should play that. Should play that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the order. I mean, it by itself generated 35 and 35, which is pretty sick. That takes us to 97. <laughs> Hit you with the give up on this one. <laughs> I just. Slash marker. This is crop rotation. Slash marker crop rotation. They need to make more games for old people that are not just trying to dip their hand into their wallet, man. Like, I know, here's the thing. People are saying that what they're doing is they have never taken a Stats 101 class, okay? So they're looking at the fact that I've played, like, two games in the last two streams where I've been like, I think this is, like, a little complicated for me. And they're like, you say every game is complicated for you? That's not true. There's a lot of games I look at on Steam that are like 70 cents. And I'm like, I'm not playing this shit. It looks way too simple. There's like a button and you click on it and a number goes up. And then when I make fun of those games, people go, No, those are my cozy games. Cozy games are okay. Cozy games are okay. And then when I play, I think it's also that I like playing strategy games. But then like... A lot of strategy games, they just, I mean, I think they naturally attract developers who would like to have complicated mechanics, which is totally fair. But it takes a while to, to find a game that fits in the sweet spot. Name one strategy game you played in the last six months and liked. The Banished Vault. Smokus Gaming, I'm sorry to do this, but I remember, sorry, Smokus Garmin. You got eight timeouts. One of them was from me. I definitely remember that. Let me go back to June 21st and let me see. Because you seem to always be in here. Like you love watching the stream every single day, but you're always complaining. So I'm going to just try to get to the root of that. Don't leave. No, 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 no. I'm the, me reaches through the screen, locks your browser tab, Doki Doki Literature Club style. No, you, there's no getting away from this uncomfortable feeling, okay? We're in it now. You might as well just enjoy it. There are some plus twos here. Don't get me wrong. Did you say anything during React Court, or did you just show up when we started playing strategy games? First, first comment, you can see why this would like, tilt you a little bit. First comment, any bets on him giving this more than an hour of a chance to shine? Okay, well, we started playing it at 11.44, and now it's 12.45. So, first off, fuck you. Uh, next comment, this looks very complicated. Can we have chess instead? I don't even understand, because now you're complaining about the fact that I... Thought it was too complicated, but your first comment was like, this looks really complicated. If you started playing Slay the Spire in 2023, do you think you would have dropped it for being too complicated? We already uh, touched upon that issue. So was Wild Frost too overdesigned in your opinion? Like, I don't know, why do we have to, like, insult every single strategy game we've ever played? Like, it, every, every time a streamer says they don't like a game... You now have to bring up every game in the genre that they've actually played and enjoyed and been like, oh, really? But you liked game A, but you don't like game B? What's up with that? Haven't seen him this focused on a game in months. Okay, he did say man has never been to Bleach Lake, Ohio. That, I'll, I'll laugh at that one. I would love to see NL play any Zachtronics game in 2023. The fucking thing is, and this is going to be crazy, Zachtronics games are hard... But 
the mechanics in the game are simple. There's two different wheels at their, that are turning and affecting each other, okay? A Zagtronics game tutorial does not go, here's a hundred different crops with 300,000 different mechanics, go nuts, motherfucker. It goes, hey, to use the whirly gig machine, you've got to put uh, punch cards in that do this. Here's how to make a punch card that moves an integer one bit to the right. And then you do that. And then the next one is like, now we're going to show you how to make it move one to the left. And then by the time you finish, you know, doing 20 tutorials, you're like, okay, now I'm ready to do like some creative problem solving. I love Zagtronics. But basically, you have to understand, I'm defending myself because your, your comment here is basically like, you're stupid. You're, you're basically calling me stupid. So I'm going to defend myself a little bit. See, this one, this is, it's a very compelling chatter because it's not simply hate. There is occasional enjoyment as well. Usually, you just get a hate watcher. What did I time you out for on June 21st, 2023? Oh, I found it. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> Hang on. Yeah, this was it. You should be more adaptable on the games you play depending on your mood and not play shit that doesn't gel with your mental state at any given moment. Why force yourself into saltiness? Northern Lion has timed out Snoka's gaming for 600 seconds. That's just crazy, man. It's kind of true. No, there's a... I'm not salty. I'm... Making fun of this person for my own engagement to get some of my dopamine back. But it's like, I'm... It's just a weird comment to write in a, to a stranger, right? Like, that's what I'm trying to get at, I suppose. Like, I don't know who you are. Why are you leaving me comments, like, as if you're my psychologist or something like that? It's just... We, I'm not mad. I'm not, like, I'm not gonna clip this, never do this to a streamer, put that up on Dexerto. I'm just... It's kind of like a weird energy. And in an act of benevolence, I'm letting you know that it's a little strange. And then I'm refreshing, and I'm just seeing your reply, because that's fair. There has been no reply. There's been no reply. And it's been five minutes. They haven't left. They're still here. I can see them on the autocomplete. You get a chance to respond. This is not like a... I'm not just trying to light you up. I'm just, you know, you've been following for four and a half years. 20% of your comments are positive. 80% of your comments are, I don't know what word to use. Not necessarily negative, but I'll be like walking to the store and you'll be like, why are you walking so weird? And I'm like, I don't know, motherfucker. I'm just hungry. Antagonistic. Maybe that's a better way to describe it. So I'm just giving you, a, a, I just want you to re reply. You can reply and say, fuck you. You could reply and say, I'm sorry. You could reply and say, I don't think this is fair and this is why. I'm just like, you could also just not reply and leave me here just F5-ing. <laughs> no, I'm not going to ban them. They subscribed for six months. <laughs> They're still here, man. Answer me. If they write, sorry, I'm AFK, I'm going to lose my fucking mind, man. Okay. I am closing your tab now. Feel free that you can get back to normal chatting. You know what it is? It's because, I, Prezo, I think you're right. All the comments here are like from strategy game segments. They're not from banter segments. It's like there's a bat signal when I'm playing a complicated game. They come here and say, like, you were smarter when you were 26. I'm here to tell you that is not true. <laughs> I may have had higher bandwidth and throughput at age 26, but the, the person that was directing the energy was not a good leader, okay? Not as good, at least. No message. Okay, well, you know what? I'm honestly taking that as a resignation, quite frankly. You resigned. I beat you in rhetoric. So stop calling me stupid. It hurts my feelings. And if it hurts your feelings to hear that you hurt someone else's feelings, that doesn't mean the person whose feelings you hurt is wrong. That means you got to look within yourself and figure out what's driving your animosity, brother. Okay, let me look at this. Throne fall. A strategy game without the headache, we've got you covered. <laughs> August 2nd, 2023, overwhelmingly positive. 97% of the user reviews are positive. With Thronefall, we tried to strip a classic strategy game from all its unnecessary complexity, combining it with some healthy hack and slash. Build up your base during the day, defend it till your last breath at night. It seems like an isometric uh, kingdom. 
yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get this. Why not? Can you talk about like this being the perfect game description for after just complaining about complicated games? Listen, Snokus Garmin, I get it, okay? Because I'm a dyed-in-the-wool hater myself. Listen to what I'm about to say, all right? And this is why I can see you, is because I am you as well. Sometimes I'm just a little bit better with the self-control on the typing fingers, or I'll type it out and then I'll backspace it. When the messages are coming by you at, you know, a thousand messages per minute, you don't have the opportunity to give every single one probably the consideration that it deserves. So people say play Thronefall. The problem is that Thronefall sounds to me like an instance-based looter shooter um, that is like a 6 out of 10 and developed by Techland or something like that. Now that I had the opportunity to, to give it its just desserts and d see what Thronefall actually was, I was like, oh, I think I might like it. And I want to understand, I want to make this known. I think it is hard to come up with the name of the game. It's the same way it's, it's hard to come up with some music as well. Holy cow, they did it. They made a strategy game that strips out the maximalist uh, elements that make it impossible for a boomer like me with uh, undiagnosed ADHD to understand it. They have made a minimalist strategy game in the same vein as Kingdom. This is Thronefall. Let's play it up. I swear to God, if I see a text box that says, if you buy this upgrade, it'll give your archers one extra point of true damage when they're standing on a forest hex, I'm gonna lose my mind! You know, I always thought though, like I'm not combat trained. I never served in like special forces or anything like that. I feel like the high ground in a lightsaber fight wouldn't be that advantageous, man. Like, I just feel like if I, if I was in like a sword fight, I almost feel like I would rather have the low ground. It's hard to defend your shins and ankles from a, from a sword blow that's coming from below you. Whereas, like, I get that they're able to, like, attack your head, but at the same time, one of these days I'm gonna land this melee attack. But it's easy to move your head out of the way, you just duck. I think the high ground discourse was solved in the Middle Ages. I'm just saying I think it differs maybe based on weapon type. Like, definitely, if you're, like, if you have a bow and arrow, I would like to have the high ground. But a sword? A one-on-one -on -one sword battle? I mean, I just feel like if... I would rather be like two feet lower than my opponent. I'm a four-star general and I agree with you. Let's go, dude! <laughs> Me trying to think of a four-star general who hasn't been uh, canceled for a hundred years for uh, war crimes. Um, um, uh, uh, Patton, uh, uh, Heinz Guderian, uh, 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 Zukov, is there anything? Help me! Help me! I've seen the picture. That's like one of the, my favorite things about um, the death of Stalin is that it's funny when Zukov walks in and his entire jacket is covered in medals. And then when you see the real Soviet photos of Zukov, they actually toned it down in the movie to make it like more realistic. The, the official portrait of Zukov, like literally the entire one side of his jacket is just covered with Medals of Valor. What weapon are you maining in the, in the medieval era? Snokus Garmin, plus two. You think I don't have <laughs> the eyes of a much younger man? Legolas, what do your mod eyes see? You're back! I see you! Okay, hang on. I don't know. What would I main? I think I'm a coward, so I would be like a bow and arrow. Or like a, a crossbow Andy or something like that. I definitely don't want to be like a dude with a shield or a, a, a sword or a bardish or something like that. Maybe this sounds like too simplistic, but like if you get, if you're an archer on the battlements and your castle's being sieged, you should never die, right? Like you just shoot your bow and arrow and then like eventually they breach the gates and then that's your cue to get the fuck out of there, dude. If you're one of the dudes with a sword, you got no choice but to be like in the midst, but <laughs> if you're... Run, it's a siege. You gotta like a tunnel or something or go out through in the sewer. 
Also, <laughs> I don't know if they ever thought of this. Maybe they did, maybe they didn't. I feel like if I was getting, if my castle was getting sieged and I was an archer, I would definitely like shoot arrows. But then as soon as they breached the gate, I would hide. And then as soon as like one of them was cut down, I would simply swap armor with them. And then I would be like, let's go guys. Check it out. I know where the nobles are hiding or something like that. <laughs> How do you explain the arrow hole or sword slash in your new outfit? I think it's simple. You say one of the vile bastards uh, sliced me, but he didn't hit a vital organ. Did you know that like after the uh, allies reinvaded Western Europe in the Second World War, there was a, a plot to kill Dwight Eisenhower from undercover German spies in Paris. And the way that they tried to suss out who were the undercover German spies was they would ask them who won the World Series last year. My ass would be uh, dead due to a false positive for sure. I think just being able to list some teams would probably clear you. I hope so. I'd be like Washington Nationals. They'd be like, what the fuck? Why the watch it? Uh, uh, Miami Marlins? Miami, Miami? Yeah, there's a baseball team in Miami, brother, in the damn swamp. Zerg, <laughs> uh, Protoss, or Terran? I was, a, I was a Protoss guy. Nerd, based, based. You have Protoss energy? You look like a Protoss guy. <laughs> I was like 12 years old. <laughs> When I played StarCraft, what do you mean I look like a Protoss guy? Why? Because they were fucking cool ass aliens, man. And they got the... the What's the dudes who walk on all fours? They go... And then they got the, the dark archons and stuff like that. Dragoons, yeah. I, thought, I always thought the Zerg was gross. And on top of that, as a little kid, I was like, bro, I can't be fucked with like expanding this creep everywhere. Are you crazy? Terrence had the best music. I, I mean, this is not a controversial take in the slightest, but... Um, StarCraft has some of the best music of any video game ever made. Sometimes, I'd forgotten about it for like 12 years, and then I played Heroes of the Storm, and I was like, this music goes insane. It's like music to, to hit a giant steel beam with a giant steel hammer too. Mechanic count 18. Yeah, but you know what's crazy is there's been so much mechanic inflation. Don't Google that, by the way, unless you work at Napa Auto Parts, then you have my permission. That 18 mechanics is now minimalistic. You ever think about uh, Super Bucket Mario? There's like one mechanic. Your ass can jump. Nobody ever says, oh, Mario's too simple for me. Everyone goes, oh, classic platform video game. But meanwhile, a game will be like, hey, uh, in order to do this next part, you need to know the atomic weight of yttrium. And you're like, I don't know that. People are like, idiot. Take me back, man. If you were at the Battle of Canae, would it have gone out like that? Would it have gone down like that? Is the Battle of Canae the one where they uh, got sandwiched and uh, the, the whole army of Roman legionaries got... Imploded like the Ocean Gate submarine. Yeah. Honestly, I think it probably would have gone down like that. I know a lot of people are a little like egotistical or maybe they like overrate their own um, abilities. I think Hannibal Barca was probably a better general than I would be. That's just my, that's my two cents. The Battle of Teutoburg Forest would not have happened to me, quite frankly. Like, I think I would have been like, don't go into the trees, this is scary. But Kane, sure. Probably, probably Kane would have gone the same way. Did you see the tweet that was like, um, it was a simulation of what happened to the people that were on the Ocean Gate submarine? And it's literally just a skeleton made of beads being turned into like a crushed can of tomato soup. And then people were like, can you imagine getting the news from like the company that like this is what happened to your, your family member? 
it's not funny, but the idea, if you saw it in a movie, you would be like, this is kind of funny. Because, like, it's just, the dude's just sitting there, and then literally, in, <laughs> I'm sorry, in, like, the blink of an eye, his whole body <laughs> turns into blood. <laughs> and then... Like, it's just so unbelievably brutal. I can't believe they even made the animation, man. It's, it's disgusting. Yeah, that's what happened. I know, but it's like, it's so brutal, dude. And then all the people in the comments were like, with no disrespect, I understand this is like a lot of forces, but at the same time, I think I would have just covered my head and I would have come out okay. <laughs> oh, man. It's just one of those things. I think you have to... It, it's funny and it's not funny. What's not funny about it? People lost their lives. But the sheer brutality reconciled with the instantaneous nature of the death is in its own way kind of comical. Like, that is definitely... In a weird way, it's kind of like the perfect way to die. Because you don't feel anything, but your whole body just gets vaporized and like... It's, it, you know, when I, in a weird way, it's, it's disgusting to hear about, but it's almost a merciful way to go, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Did you see the guy who said he was asking if you could survive it with training? <laughs> oh, man. Jason Statham pretty much did that in the Meg 2. Macros. Did the Meg 2 deserve the 0% that it had on Rotten Tomatoes? I like fun movies, but I do want to say that I am a Meg hater. If you, li I'm, if you like it, it's good. It brings more joy into the world, okay? But Meg 1, I was like, I, I hated the movie. You hated the Meg? I thought it was too long, and it just... I don't know, there's like those movies that have a veneer of like... 50% of the movie was funded by the Chinese government. So as a result, like half of the movie either takes place in China or like the lead actress is a Chinese actress, which for me is just like, that doesn't necessarily mean the movie is bad, but it means that clearly this is just made by the studios to like make money. You know, it's not like someone was like, I got a really amazing idea for a movie. They were like, check this out. This will really play well overseas. It's a, it's a movie as a commodity instead of as art, which is fine. But it's the same reason my ass didn't rush to the multiplex to see Pacific Rim 2. She give me top till I ZZ. Holy cow, it's the first version of that joke that is actually funny. I'm stunned. You have actually, you've cracked the damn code. 99% of people who try to make that joke it just falls on his face because the punchline doesn't even make sense. But you you got it. Quick, post it to Twitter. Oh, you mean X? <laughs> See, you don't like how it feels, do you? Usually the joke is that it's not funny. Wait, really? Because <laughs> I've been watching people type that joke for a year and a half. And almost every single time, I've been like, this is not funny at all. Hey, now, any thoughts on the James Harden situation? I mean, Harden, he's got to be the only player in the NFL that when he retires, his, uh, he's going to have a best of trade demand compilation that goes to YouTube, and it's going to be uh, 35 minutes long. Sorry, NBA, not, not NFL. Can I ask, this is an honest question. Please only answer this question if you are Irish, okay? Is... A leprechaun, I don't want to say like a, a racist character, but like as an Irish person, let me give you the genesis here, okay? When we go through It's a Small World After All, the ride at Disney World, when you get to Ireland, there's two people wearing all green clothes doing a dance, and then there's a leprechaun sticking his head out of a pot of gold over and over. I am not Irish, so I don't know if, as an Irish person, you're like, 
what the hell? They couldn't have put something else out there? Like, it's got, they, they put a damn... They, they had to put a damn, like, fictional creature? Not offensive, it's just folklore. Okay, you know what? Good to know. I didn't think everything was offensive. I was simply asking if people from Ireland were offended by it. Because honestly, I don't get offended by it, but whenever I see, like, a portrayal of Canada in the media, this shit is always, like... Someone saying sorry, and then like a Mountie riding a horse. And I'm like, don't even, they don't even do that shit. It's like they do that shit in the parades. The rest of the time, if the Royal Canadian Mounted Police come up to your house, they're in like a lifted uh, Dodge Ram 1500, and they're about to like use a shotgun to blow off your doorknob and then throw a flashbang into your condo. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. I'm just saying like, it's a little antiquated at least. It's more maple syrup than Tim Hortons. Listen, I, you just surfaced an anecdote I forgot about. When we were in Disney Springs, we went to a store to buy some lotion for my wife, not for me. It's not like that video where the kid is getting hand lotion as a graduation present, okay? The uh, cashier, when she was ringing us up, she said, where are you guys from? We said, we're from Vancouver, BC. She said, oh, I'm jealous. And in my head, I went fair, that's fair. But then she said, I'm jealous because you guys have the good Tim Hortons is up there. And I didn't have the heart. To, I mean, it's just small talk. But I didn't have the heart to tell her that we don't mess with that stuff. <laughs> but I said, oh, yeah, where are you from? And she said, oh, I'm from Michigan. So we have some Tim Hortons, but they're not the same. And I was like, it re for me it raised the question of how bad the Michigan Tim Hortons must be for someone to be like wistfully thinking about a Canadian Tim Hortons, which I would essentially only eat at if I was uh, buying food for a youth softball team. Michigan Tim Hortons is pretty terrible. This feels, I feel bad saying this, but I also feel like I have to speak my truth I went to, I've been to one Dunkin' Donuts in my entire life, and it was uh, a horrendous experience. I don't know if it, I, I'm not going to say it's worse than Tim Hortons, because I think that's ignorant, but when I was there, I was like, this is god-awful. It was not in an airport, it was in downtown Boston. And don't do the thing that people always do. Oh, you should never, oh, downtown Boston? No, you got to go to the one in Newell. You got to go to the one in Newell. Downtown Boston's a, a crap hole. Well, that's just where everything was, so I happened to be there, okay? Am I the asshole? Me, 24F, and my husband, 20F, had a fight. He uh, was training to be a Jedi and threw all of his training away to become the protege for a Sith Lord. He said there's only one spot available, so it's a very prestigious job. And then, I don't know, what did he do? He killed, he killed Mace Windu. He killed Mace Windu. No, he didn't kill Mace Windu. He intervened in the fight, which allowed Mace Windu to be killed. Here's a question I have for you about... He did kill all those kids, huh? <laughs> Forgot about that part. If Anakin Skywalker had not intervened, would Darth Sidious have been able to overpower Mace Windu? The, the meat and potatoes of the question is, was Darth Sidious simply feigning a lack of strength versus Mace Windu in order to seduce Anakin to the dark side, in order to make it so Anakin could not return from the mistake that he made by killing Master Windu? He was holding back. Because, like, I don't understand how the power level works in Star Wars. But it seems to me like Darth Sidious fucking soloed a room full of four Jedi Masters. And the only one who even manages to block a single lightsaber strike is Kit Fisto. And he still gets ethered in, like, two seconds, okay? So Mace Windu would have to be stronger than all four of those members of the Jedi Council in order for, for it to make sense that the Emperor was getting destroyed by Mace Windu. That's all I'm saying. He is that strong? I mean, I know that 
Canonically, as of the prequels, he was considered the strongest of the Jedi. But still, like, I didn't know he was that OP. The Jedi Council is not the strongest Jedi, it's simply the wisest. Yeah, but wasn't Mace Windu and Yoda on the Jedi Council? And they were like the strongest Jedis, man. That's a mere coincidence. Ki-Adi Mundi must have been a pretty strong Jedi. He sat on the Jedi, Jedi Council. Why do I know that Ki-Adi Mundi's strong? Because the dude had like nine wives. He's got a, I, I can't even imagine, like, professionally his responsibilities are beyond me. But like domestically, the dude must have been real busy. Why was he allowed to have wives? I think it's like it's part of their culture, right? So I don't mean like, I'm not suggesting he's Mormon. I'm suggesting that his, the alien planet that he came from, it was like women outnumber men like nine to one or something like that. The species took so long to breed that it had to be done that way. Jedi's can't though? Well, I think that they would make an exception to keep your damn species alive, you know? They're like, oh, Jedi Council uh, member, Jedi's can't marry. Yeah, but if, if Yoda was the last Yoda and Yaddle was the last female Yoda, then you know they're letting Yoda have a kid. Rules are made to be broken. Insert Yoda, my man tweet. It's a good tweet. They literally do make an exception for exactly this. I know, I've been on Wikipedia. I'm actually an admin on Wikipedia. How do you know so much about the Jedi Council? Because I'm good at watching movies, unlike everybody that apparently saw Oppenheimer and had to look at their phone halfway through. I can sit down and I can just look at the screen for like three and a half hours and, and digest everything that happens and like maybe even have some memory of it. See Barbie yet? No, I haven't seen anything. Well, I'll tell you. I only had like a passing interest in seeing Barbie, and most of that was because I heard it was very good. And then I watched Lady Bird, and I was like, man, this movie's amazing. I gotta see Barbie. Remember Hannibal's teachings. Honestly, I don't wanna insult Hannibal. I don't wanna be like a backseat Carthaginian or, or whatever. But I feel like um, his big mistake was uh, he basically inted, is I guess what I'm trying to say. When Scipio Africanus killed Hasdrubal and then threw his head over the gates, I think he let his emotions get the better of him and he stopped thinking rationally. If he kept thinking rationally, I mean, listen, it's pretty unlikely that he was ever going to lead Carthage to conquer Rome, but he could have at least led to an armistice because he could have created a situation where there's no shot that Rome takes down Carthage. That's all I'm trying to say. Oh, I was smelling it. I was smelling it. Oh, baby. Are you going an hour later today? No. Oh, okay. Thank you. It. Look at this. Of all the juns, kimchi has to be, in my opinion, one of the spiciest. Oh. It's perfect. It's crispy. Please don't put your guys all the way at the front. They respawn. Don't be dramatic. What's an opinion on Korean food? that would have you like this, guy with swords at his throat. My personal opinion is maybe they could serve the jjigae just like 10 degrees colder, instead of it always comes out in the duke beggy and the shit is like And then you dip your spoon into the soup and you, take, you try to take a bite of it because you went to the restaurant because you were hungry, but then it's like boiling and it scalds your mouth and you're like, oh, I'll just let it sit for a while. So then you're like, oh, I'll eat some of the banchan while I wait for it to cool down. And then you finish the banchan in three seconds because Korean culture means that you can always ask for free refills. So instead of bringing you enough banchan, they always give you the bare minimum level of banchan and then force you to ask for more. I do, sometimes I'll, I'll pour an ice cube from my water into like a kimchi jjigae so I could drink it. Like that was a, a certified classic when I worked in Korea. You would go to the kimbap, 
Jungkook in order to get some lunch, you know, you got like a 45 minute lunch break, you say, hey, can I have some kimchi jjigae? They say, sure. They come out with like a, a nuclear fuel rod straight from Three Mile Island. And then you would just, you'd have to pour some water in it in order to make it eatable by the time your lunch break was over. Otherwise, you'd just be sitting there with a big old bowl of steam and then you'd be like, I got to go teach a bunch of six-year-olds how to respond to, hi, how are you? I'm fine, thank you, and you. Try pouring it into a small rice bowl and eating it together. Listen, brother, I know all the life hacks, okay? That being said, you're right, it cools it down. But it doesn't cool it down. They could still serve it five degrees Celsius cooler. That's all I'm saying. Rate the food. Okay, this is a 10 out of 10 kimchi jun. And I don't know, you could get into it on your stream. Of all the juns, I think kimchi's the best. I don't mind a, a heimul pa jun, but oftentimes, like sometimes it's just too much seafood for me to eat in a single pancake, you know? At the end of the day, I'll eat almost any seafood. But there is like a hierarchy, right? Crab, lobster, fish. And sometimes in the Heimol Pajun, they just be throwing in some mollusks in there that I don't even know if they're actually food. I'll eat it, but at the same time, I'm like, I don't know what this is, man. What if they put some boiled triangles in there? Hey, Banal, speaking of Korean food, I saw when you made bibimbap, you posted it on Twitter and you said, check out my bibimbap. There was no rice in the bibimbap, Banal. There was no rice in the bibimbap. Do you know what bop means? Bop is Korean for rice. There was rice under it. I didn't see any rice under it, Banal. I didn't see any rice. It's okay if you're making keto bibimbap. But that's not bibimbap. That's bibim. And then I forgot what the word for vegetable is in Korean. White people, when they learn one foreign word. Excuse me. Shila hamni da. Burger King Odeo you say oh? Hankuk ma moteo, mian hamnida. I said, excuse me, where's the Burger King? I don't speak Korean. Sorry. Shila hamnida, hua jung shilo deo juseo. Hankuk ma moteo. You said, give me Burger King. Shila <laughs> hamnida. That's under control. Burger King. O-D-A-O Chimika? <laughs> what about that one? Say the cats are hungry? Ko yangi Nun Ko yangi dul Bego pa Ogyangi tul pego pa imnida. That's all I got. That's all I got. How can I get? How was that, Kate? She said yo, then she said lo. You're so close. End it with yo. Koyangi tul pego pa. Imnio. <laughs> that doesn't sound right. Oh, she said yo because I'm supposed to end it with yo, not because she was surprised how good I was doing. Oh no. Yeah, well, freaking Jun and Pig on Hail, so are you ready to stream? And John and Begopa, yo, by the way, as well, in addition to that, Koriko. Kuka, 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 you got me, you got me. White guy shocks Twitch chat with perfect Korean. Okay, ready. <laughs> I do love those videos. It was definitely in like the year 2010. You would be like, white guy blows mind of waiter in Taiwan restaurant by speaking Chinese. And you'd be like, wow, that's crazy. And now every single one that I see is literally just the waiter no selling it. It's 2023, bro. Nobody's surprised to see a white guy that speaks Chinese. You've probably been teaching English here for like 15 years straight. 
It was, I got lucky back in the day in 2010, you could go to Korea and if you sat down and ordered some food and then when it arrived, you said, Kamsamnida, they would go, whoa, wow, good job. Nowadays, they see there's that one British dude who speaks perfect Korean and is on the, he's on all the Korean variety shows. There's, on the Korean and the Japanese variety shows, they always get, they parade one white guy out there and they're like, check it out. A handsome guy from England that speaks the language perfectly. Are you YouTuber? I am. And all, I, I, this is probably my own bias. I don't know what the hell he's saying because he's speaking Korean, but I always just assume he's selling out North America. I always assume he's like, you see in Korea, everything's amazing. In North America, everything fucking sucks shit. And then they're all like, ha 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 ha, I'm like, listen you motherfucker. He's probably just saying, oh my God, I can't believe they're using gochujang in this sauce. It's so tasty. But in my head, he's saying like, you know, wow, everything in this country is so much better than everything in my home country. And I'm like, you, you damn Benedict Arnold. Anyway, apparently Kate's live. I'm gonna, I'll send you over there so I can eat the rest of my kimchi jeon in peace. Enjoy yourself and I'll see you uh, tomorrow. Did Ryan tell you that um, on our last day in Disney World, we constantly met with a friend. I think yesterday's stream, he saw the guy on his, in his chat, right? And then Ryan said, like, oh, happy birthday. Your birthday was on Sunday or something. Yeah, the medical student guy. Yeah. Dude, it was so crazy. I don't know if Ryan told you the story from my perspective. So um, I rode Space Mountain like a week before so i didn't need to ride the space mountain instead i said i will ride peter pen with luna and you and two of my nieces can go to space mountain and ride it because ryan has never ridden space mountain before and then ryan said okay and i said after you're done with space mountain meet me here in the gift shop and then he said okay so uh luna and i we went to peter pen ride we rode the peter pen ride and then we were just kind of browsing in the gift shop just to um, wait for Ryan to come back. And then Luna was really interested in like the Mickey Mouse headband. And she was like, oh, look at this. That's cute, whatever. And then um, there was like this uh, white family came in and then the mom grabs like the little like Mickey Mouse hat that says happy birthday. And then it's like, oh, son, you should wear that because it's your birthday. And then he was like so nice because he, he looked old enough to not wear those Mickey Mouse headband. He would just try it on. I was like, um, I think it would be too hot. And I'm like, my first impression was like, wow, that's so nice. Because if my mom said like, hey, you should wear this because it's your birthday, I would be like, are you stupid? I'm not five. I'm not going to wear that. It's the, it's like the Mickey Mouse hat, you know, like the one with like the little bowl, like it looks a little silly. It's not like the headband, like nice headband. It was the bowl cut. And I was like, I'm not five. I don't, I don't want to wear that mom. But then the guy was like, so nice is his mom. And just like, oh, I think that would be too hot. And then I was like, oh my gosh, what a nice dude. Cause like, I would totally blast my mom's ass. And that was like, that. I just thought of that as I was browsing with my daughter. And then the dad, like his dad goes like, yeah, um, we came to Disney World for your birthday. Wouldn't it be crazy if we meet Northern Lion here? And I literally got jump scared. Like there was no ground of building on or anything, right? I was just like. Oh, hey, son, try this on. It says happy birthday. And it's your birthday. And then he wears it. And it's like, oh, I think it would be too hot. And then the dad goes like, yeah, like we came to Disney World for your birthday. Wouldn't it be crazy if we meet Northern Lion here? And I was like, I got legit jumped. Like, if anyone were to see me, like, I lifted myself from the ground with the jump scare. Like, it was, I don't know how to describe it. It was so scary. I was like, like, who? <laughs> I was like, and then... In my head, I'm just going through, I'm just going through in my head, I'm just like, 
Did they say Northern Lion? Wait, is there anything that's Northern Lion? Is there like, is there a ride called Northern Lion? Northern, Northern Light? No, is there anything that's like, maybe I misheard? And then like, in my head, I was like, this is crazy. And then I was like, and then I, after like, I was sweating almost, right? I was like, like, what's going on? Like, it's, it was so, so spook. So I looked at the sun in his eyes, thinking like, if he knows Ryan, he would know me. And then he would be like, oh, hey, Kate, or where is Ryan or something, right? So I looked at him, and then he looked at me, and then he smiled, and then I smiled, and then there was nothing, and then I was like, oh, okay, I must have misheard, right? And then I was like, it was very awkward, and then at the same time, I had to look after Luna, because like, she was like, oh, mommy, I want to see this, I want to see that. So I was like, okay, and I was just getting dragged along, but then at the same time, I didn't want to lose the sight of this uh this family because like obviously ryan was on his way to this gift shop and it's his birthday and i'd be like bro isn't would it be so crazy if ryan out of nowhere appears in this gift shop it will blow this family's brain and then i whipped out my cell phone I was like ryan emergency you have to you have to run to the gift shop there's a there's a fan waiting for you crazy stuff you would not believe this please rush your butt here and then i i was like too scared to lose the sight of them because like i was like keep doubting myself like did they say northern lion like i don't want to you know like be full of myself right and i was just like or full of my husband and i was like oh my gosh like so i was kind of following them in the gift shop just to make sure like they don't go away because like if they were gonna go away i wanted to stop them and say like no their lines coming but i didn't I, I but then there was a chance of me mishearing it so i was just like i didn't want to go to that part like i didn't that was my last straw right so i was like making sure keeping an eye on the fan while also keeping an eye on my daughter who was like mommy look at this pin mommy look at this toy and i was like yes yes and then um, I suddenly, as soon as Ryan arrives into the gift shop, I lost the sight of the fan. And I'm like, oh, blasts, they're gone. They don't even know. They don't even know. They only know Ryan. They don't even know me. Oh, Ryan's here and now they're gone. But then I make sure to like call out Ryan really loud. I was like, Ryan, I'm here, Ryan. <laughs> Just to make sure if the fan was nearby, maybe like they were here and look back i was like ryan this way and then as ryan was approaching me the the family approached ryan it's like oh hey northern lion and then the the fan found ryan and i was like yo i have made this miracle happen it was like a huge coincidence with the jump scare and like it almost became like a horror Cause like I don't know why it became horror. Cause there was nothing scary about it except the fact that just just my thought was eating myself. And I'm just like, was the and then what's crazy? If the kid said, "Man, I would love it would my it would be a perfect birthday if I see Northern Lion in the Magic Kingdom or something like that," then I'll be like, he must have said Northern Lion. But the reason why I doubted was because his dad, who looked around like. I don't know, like 40, like late 40 or like uh, early 50. Um, it was the dad who said, yeah, won't it, be, won't it be amazing if you meet Northern Lion here? Like it was the dad, not the kid. So I was like, are you telling me this late 40 or early 50 year old man is watching Northern Lion? I don't know. And then he's saying like, won't it be amazing to meet Northern Lion? to his kid who's like 19 and i was like this is like that that cannot be true that cannot be true but then when ryan came to the gift store they were like oh hey northern lion and then you know what's even more magical you know the crazy hawaii crazy hawaiian shirt that uh librarian loves it's it's the it's the disney hawaiian shirt with like the the, the white and the green like the light green one 
Ryan was wearing that shirt, the infamous crazy shirt. Yeah, the crew shirt. The one that librarian loves the like the those the shirt that he loves. And I was like, oh my gosh, this birthday kid doesn't even know how lucky he has it. Cause Ryan is wearing that shirt. That's the infamous shirt, dude. And then they're like, oh hey, Northern Lion, I'm a huge fan. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, I was right. I was not wrong. I did hear it correctly. He was looking for Northern Lion. But then the dad goes like, hey, Northern Lion, I'm also a huge fan of you too. I'm like, no way. The dad watches Ryan and is a huge fan. And his son, who is going to medical school, so aka Smart Brain, also, also watches Ryan. And I was like, whoa, that's crazy. And then apparently they uh, watched him play golf game. Like, what was it? Like the, the, Wii, like the Switch golf or whatever and then um they thought it was really fun so they bought the game and then played the game together or something with his like the son and son and the father and i was like oh my god that's so wholesome what and i was like dude i was like i saw the like literal magic happening in front of my eyes and i was like this is crazy and you know what's even more crazy my nieces they almost died. They were like, oh, I know. I heard that Uncle Ryan is famous, but I have never seen this like fan interaction before. And then like the, the fan is like, oh my gosh, Northern Lion, I would love to have a picture with you. And then they were like taking a picture with Ryan. And then like my nieces were like, oh my gosh, Uncle Ryan is actually famous. And I was like, ah. and I'm like, whoa, this is just so cool. Like, like, what chance can, like, the fan meet Uncle Ryan in Magic Kingdom? Like, what? It's like, it was, they it blew their mind. So it was like literal brains blowing every corner of that gift shop. And I was like, holy. And then, and then, and then, no offense. I don't know if the, the birthday boy is in the chat. No offense taken. But then he would. Cause like, you know how I said we made the eye contact, you know, like, cause I was like, you know me. And then like, he looked at me like a little confused and I just kind of gave a little smile and I kind of left. And then he was like, yeah, I felt like I've seen her before. Is she like your sister or something? And I was like, Bleh! no, no. And I was like, ha ha. Haha, <laughs> yes, haha, <laughs> I'm Ryan's sister. Oh, fuck, dude. <laughs> he was like, I, yeah, I think, uh, I think, like, I've seen her. I don't know. But to be fair, I don't, I don't, when I stream, I don't have webcam on, so it's fair that he doesn't know how I look. That's fine. But I was like, like, I, I feel like I've seen her face, but I wasn't too sure. And I'm like, that's fair. That's fair, but at the same time, I think he said, like, like, maybe she's, like, your sister or something. But maybe he was nervous, so, you know, a little doubt, you know, give him some room of doubt. But I was, I was a little, like, shook, to say the least, honestly. And then they took a photo, and then we were like, oh my god, this is so crazy. And then my nieces were like, oh my god, this is so crazy. And then Luna is like, mommy, look at this, look at that. I was like, oh, my daughter, you're too young to understand what just happened. Like, literally, a stroke of miracle just happened. And she's like, I would like to look at this toy. And then the fan came back. And then I was like, holy, do they want photo with me too? <laughs> I was like, because, like, they took the photo with Ryan and then they left, right? So I was just like, and then they came back. And I was like, oh, maybe they're like, maybe they want photo with me too. Maybe they were like, oh, by the way, we you know, like, I, we forgot to take photo with Kate as well. So maybe, like, if it, but no. No, that was not the case. They came back and they said the sun was behind us. So the face, you cannot really see the face. So they wanted to change the location and take a photo with Ryan so that you, they can see Ryan's face better. And I was like, that's, that's fine. That's fine. I mean, it's, it's, it's okay. I've, I 1%. It was only 1% of me thinking that. I'm I 99% of me is just so happy that I somehow 
like a like a miracle just happened you know like i don't know how they would have known they would have been magic kingdom on the day we leave you know like i'm I'm glad it happened if i was i he doesn't know why he doesn't know is that all cap ryan get your ass here to the gift shop asap huge fan alert they're waiting for you it's a birthday boy oh my god oh my god <laughs> all cap if ryan didn't see that he would he might have walked a little bit slower he might have detoured a little bit i was like ryan come here but it's like that's just the backstage i guess it's it was good it was good and then you know how i told you guys we ate at the outback steakhouse and then we got a little tummy ache because like the food was disgusting and it was bad um oh lowly nickel Thank you very much. Tumpster, 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 tumpster. Oh my god. I couldn't believe he's a mod. And then uh, Outback Steakhouse, it was terrible. Got a stomach ache. And then Ryan had to use the bathroom on the plane because, like, he got a tummy ache. But then after the whole flight, I was sitting a row behind him with Luna. And it was really late. So I was kind of dozing off here and there. And then when we arrived at Vancouver, Ryan was like, Oh, by the way, there was a fan on the plane and they came over and they said hi. They didn't want to bother so much, but they just wanted to say hi. And I was like, Whoa, that's crazy. And then I think it was yesterday dinner while we were eating dinner. Ryan was like, Oh my gosh. I just thought of like the funniest idea. What if the fan? I didn't know like where the fans were, were sitting, but like if they were sitting in the back near the bathroom, like they would have definitely heard me farting like crazy. Cause I was letting off the fart in the in the bathroom in the airplane. And I was like, oh man, that is like that is crazy. <laughs> I'm sure, you know, airplane being loud and noisy, I don't think they would have heard anything, but man. And then my nieces, they were also pogging their, like, cra they were pogging off crazy. They were like, Aunt Kate, Uncle Ryan got recognized again, and this time it was on the plane. Oh my god. And I was like, whoa. And they were like, this is so crazy. This early flaming lips. Boomer. 